try to find solutions to very complex environmental problems. Today we are discussing the subject of stubble burning. I have with me in the studio today Neeti Gupta from the Council on Energy, Environment and Water and Sunil Dhaya from Greenpeace. Neeti, you've just authored a report which talks about the issue of crop waste burning. Could you give us a sense of why did you get into this issue and what were your key findings? Right. Thank you for having me here. So when we look at, uh, so we all know crop residue is one of the main major contributor of air pollution in Delhi and NCR. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the same time, we uh, so urban urban air pollution in Delhi is a has a very urban bias to it, yeah. right? So uh, the narrative around air pollution is. First of all, it's mostly focused on cities and mm. towns. Even if you look at the reports, it's 10 most polluting cities or 20 most polluting cities. It's never, and given that more than half of the population stays in rural areas, mm. we tend to forget what air they are breathing, where burning is actually taking place. Yes. I actually looked at the figures and it says 12 to 60 percent of particulate matter contribution comes from, from the from right? from exactly right. so so we wanted to kind of fill in this informational gap and wanted to see what exactly is the condition of air quality in uh, rural areas where mm. the burning actually takes place right. so as part of the study we deployed uh, 48 sensors across four districts in Punjab we covered Ludhiana uh, Sangarur mm. these are more paddy intensive regions and Hoshiarpur and uh, uh, Pathan Court, which yeah. are uh, relatively less paddy intensive regions, also to see the comparison uh, yes. between these two areas. Yes. And uh, the uh, other part uh, of the study was also to just understand farmers' perspective on the entire issue because uh, uh, we know the most of the media coverage around the issue happens during October to December, yes. right? During those yes. winter months. It's not that the air quality is cleaner in Delhi throughout the season. Mm. But when the smog is basically visible to the naked eye, you say, yeah. right? So could you yeah. give us a sense of what were the key findings of this report? Yeah, sure. So two very important findings. Uh, urban rural air quality is as bad as urban uh, air quality, especially mm -hmm. in those peak burning seasons. The our sensors data, uh, which were covering PM 2.5 emissions, in especially in Ludhiana and Sangrur, where burning mostly takes place mm -hmm. due to they are more paddy intensive areas. Mm -hmm. uh, so PM 2.5 emissions actually reached on an average to 219 to 630 microgram per meter cube, which yes. is as bad as uh, air quality in Delhi. Yes. And second uh, findings that was through interviews uh, with farmers um, was uh, again very interesting that the alternatives that are provided to, gov to these farmers are not sufficient. Yes. Uh, so that's yes, interesting. Yeah. So what you're saying to me is, uh, firstly, that uh, it's very interesting. We've thought of, we've kind of demonized the farmers in our narrative and said the farmers are to blame. But what we don't realize is it's also affecting their lungs when exactly. they're burning the crops. And uh, you've also spoken about, you've also researched on the alternative technology. Right. We'll come to that. But Sunil, I want to understand from you. It's all very well to say that crop waste burning is a problem, but there's a range of issues which affect pollution in North India. Do you think somewhere we are, you know, it's so convenient to demonize the farmers and not talk about the other issues? Uh, see, uh, uh, it has a history to uh, it, the entire air pollution narrative. If you look at the even old scheme which came in Delhi, that mm. the millions of people people needed to change the way they commute, and I, I say that's necessary to do. But only uh, talking about that particular subject for a year uh, delayed actions on other uh, sectors which needed to be controlled. Okay. And once that didn't succeed in providing us clean air, then mm. the narrative shifted to the farmers. And in the last two years, we have seen significant portion of the narrative going towards that the farmers in Haryana and Punjab yes, contribute yes. to Delhi's problem. Yes, and yes. that's true. That's true for that particular season, those 15, 20 days. Mm. But what is also uh, a reality is that there was something common in both the narratives, be it the over uh, even old scheme or the uh, uh, crop residue burning mm. that the industry industry and the bigger polluters were hiding behind the people yes. and uh, th that po portrays us 
that the narratives which are been built by uh, different uh, uh, stakeholders including mm. civil society mm. uh, needs to be much more comprehensive and systematic in terms of talking about yes we need to move on from uh, individual uh, privatized transportation mode to the public transportation and non motorized yes. transport as well as reduce crop residue burning in those particular seasons in in haryana and punjab but th we shouldn't let the big uh, polluters and the industries hide behind the poor and hide behind the public and that's uh, what is happening and th that's what needs to be tackled the national clean air program mm -hmm. uh, puts an emphasis on on it it says that uh, various sectors contribute to it and they need to be controlled and i hope that we move beyond what is already existing in ncap in mm -hmm. terms of just recognizing these sectors as pollution problem mm -hmm. going to a, a extent wherein we say that the pollution load or emission load from these sectors have to be regulated uh, yes. with the same intensity the way we try to yes. tackle the you know scheme or the yes. farmers yes. It's interesting you draw those parallels, but I would also like to understand, you know, for somebody who's watching who's not that familiar with air pollution, how much does industry contribute? How much does transport contribute? Because it's very easy to sort of say, okay, this we can't change. We can't change our cars. We can't, but farmers have to change. So how much, what are the... So uh, you know, uh, if we roughly talk about the annual average percentage contributions, yes. the transport sector uh, in Delhi and CR mm -hmm. contributes to about 23 to 26 percent this varies in different well, season okay. and the percentages go up in yeah. winters uh, when the b there are more stable conditions and so it would also differ depending on weather seasons. conditions if there's wind blowing yes. and day to day yes. it, it varies okay. the percentage right. and similarly uh, even thermal power plants and other industries also uh, contribute about 25 to 30 percent so and that's a that's a ma yeah. major chunk and that's what i was mentioning that mm. these big polluters are mm. still going the way they were operating yes. the three years back yes. whereas farmers uh, are bearing the burn they mm. should they should be put on uh, tight schedule in terms mm. of changing the way they are uh, managing their cropping patterns the way they were yes. they are managing stubble but uh, at the same time we should put emphasis equal emphasis on other sectors okay so I, okay that's an interesting perspective Niti I want you to now discuss uh, in your report you do uh, discuss the alternative technologies exactly. you're not just saying that there's a problem yeah. you've actually gone uh, there and done an economic uh, feasibility of the happy cedars you know, everybody is giving this as the best solution exactly. and, you know, happy cedars will work and, you know, air pollution will be resolved. Yeah. Is that the case? So if you look at the short term solution of happy cedar, maybe it's an agri implement because now we know that center government is promoting it uh, mm -hmm. since 2018 mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, economic viability, yes, it is economic, uh, economically viable, but given the rental model of it. Uh, not if you were to buy the machinery, it is a costly machinery, even with subsidies, 50% and 80% subsidies that now the government is giving to buy these uh, machineries for small and marginal farmers, it is still not uh, an, uh, a feasible or uh, an economical option. Mm. And more so one of the challenges that we found uh, during our uh, interviews mm. and also uh, during our interviews was that there's no standard rental uh, cost of these mm -hmm. machineries. Mm -hmm. So some farmers cooperatives are charging 500 per acre and others are charging say 1500 yeah. to 2000 so per yeah, acre. So there's nobody controlling, so nobody the, controlling the prices. So and also the availability of happy cedars is not there. I mean uh, Punjab what it uh, there's more than uh, 5 million acres of land is burned every year, right? And given the capacity of this machine, you actually need close to 30, 35,000 uh, happy cedars just in Punjab. I'm not talking right. about Western UP and Haryana here. Yes. And uh, I think in 2018, the sales figure was a little over 8,000. Mm. 8, mm. So y there's still a lot of uh, gap there to get filled in. Mm. And more so, uh, I think uh, uh, given the depleting water table in Punjab now, mm. it could be a good short term solution and mm. more immediate solution. Mm. But I think Punjab f still needs to shift away from this crop uh, of uh, paddy and wheat monoculture yes. that yes. they've... Uh, uh yeah, so I found it very interesting that your report actually addresses that question because this is not just about air pollution it's yeah. about an agrarian crisis exactly. that the farmers in Punjab are facing exactly. and you know just to explain to our viewers that the reason why crops are burnt or crop residue is burnt is because there's a short distance between uh, there's, there's a very short duration, duration between yeah. uh, you know harvesting your crop and, and then getting the, the soil week. ready for the next cycle so I think uh, I, I found it interesting that one of the recommendations you make is 
uh, you know, you've talked about the MSP and you've also yep. spoken about how Punjab needs to change its cropping pattern. Exactly. Could you uh, talk about Yeah, that so we, and paddy more so because paddy is a very water intensive crop. Mm. Uh, to give you a perspective, say to grow paddy in one acre of land, yeah. you need close to 1600 millimeters of water. Right. Now rainfall covers just 500 millimeter. Yes. Remaining 1100 is coming from extracting it from groundwater. Right. So ha more than 80% of the blocks are water blocks are already ex over exploited in Punjab. Yes. Yes. So eventually, if not if not now, but in five f uh, years or in ten years, Punjab will have to shift away. Will have to break this uh, uh, paddy and wheat monoculture. Right. Uh, air pollution again, it is just a symptom and yeah. not the main disease. Yes. Yes. Um, a symptom of a very ill ecosystem i think that's the it way it to sum it up uh, is there in terms of uh, how do you see policy makers responding to the suggestions because it requires a rehaul of your economy of your policies you've also spoken about the msp yeah so i think how how we sh should look at this problem is kind of trying to look at it from more immediate solutions mm -hmm. to more mid medium solutions to a longer term solutions you cannot uh, expect the entire uh, you cannot expect farmers to directly shift from this paddy wheat to traditional crops like maize and millets yeah. um, also given there's uh, there's no assured market structures yeah. there's a lot of uh, agricultural related policies right which kind of hampers <laughs> this yeah. so uh, uh, but more immediate solution would be, I think, provide happy cedar mm -hmm. if it uh, mm -hmm. proves to be uh, an economically viable, mm -hmm. which it is, uh, making farmers aware of the agro agroeconomic benefits of using happy cedar or yeah. other agri implements, whether it's good for your soil health, yeah. because these kind of things will make some kind of behavior changes yes. also. You yes. cannot just expect them to change to any technology overnight. Exactly. I think that's the right... Uh, you, in fact, I was going to come to the topic of behavior change because, as you rightly pointed out, Sunil, that you said behavior change is when it comes to urban people, the odd even scheme was a great example, and rural, the rural sector, the farmers mm -hmm. is a great example. Essentially, if we have to deal with weighty environmental problems, we have to deal with our own behavior. So, Sunil, could you tell us how is this behavior change going to come about? How does one walk towards a solution? See, uh, uh, as Niti mentioned, that uh, the farmers, the w when they were speaking to farmers or anybody who was researching on the air pollution subject over the last few years, uh, have interacted with the farmers. One thing which has come out very significantly is that any technological solution would not work in Punjab. Mm -hmm. It will not resolve the pollution entirely. Yeah. And there, in the the attitude of the government till now has been that we allocate a certain amount of money, 1100 crores or, mm. or whatever, and then this will solve the uh, crisis. It's it like the air purifiers we put yeah, up in exactly. our homes. And, uh, and you, you, know. you give <laughs> the money and then yes. you put away. So that, that won't, won't help. Uh, what is required is the government uh, was supposed to engage with farmers in longer behavioral mm. change campaigns yes. rather than just giving machines if they, right. they spread the awareness on the alternative cropping patterns mm. and changing the cycles a little bit, changing uh, the uh, crops which they Yes. cultivate over the years. Yes. Th that's, I think, uh, w w what is required, that kind of behavioral change at the rural mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 part. Whereas uh, it comes to city level pollution, we, Delhi is a great example. And I'll say, like, we have not resolved the air pollution crisis mm -hmm. in Delhi, but we have moved a long way compared to the few narrative years. Has shifted. Mm -hmm. the narrative yeah. has shifted. People have started talking about air pollution. Mm -hmm. You go and speak to anybody, they'll speak about air pollution. Mm -hmm. The media has been reporting it mm -hmm. really well. Mm -hmm. The politicians, even if they are reacting to the mm -hmm. questions by media and civil society, they are reacting. Yeah. And there are policies being formulated. What is missing even right now when you speak to a politician, the question which they ask uh, anybody who is working on air pollution is that I'll bring this issue to my party mm. and the party might take up the issue, but they will only take up issues which uh, people are really agitated with and mm. concerned with. Right. And they don't see uh, thousands of people demanding for their right to breathe yes. and right to clean air. Yes. And yes. that that's an attitude change which I think it's building up in Delhi, it has yeah. built up, but, but it still needs to be at a level wherein every individual holds every person, I including himself and his mm. family, uh, mm. responsible for causing a certain time of type of pollution or emission load yes. and ask for, for, for that solution change. Absolutely. The other yeah. uh, uh, l last thing which I, I would like to say is that 
this a uh, behavioral change uh, would not work in silos if, yes, if a yeah. certain section of society in yes. cities come out yes. uh, it can only take you from point a to b but it will not give you breathable clean air it might reduce uh, 5 10 microgram or whatever so the rural people yeah. uh, has not ha has not come out yet uh, with the urban people and mm -hmm. even in urban scenarios there are only certain sections of the society so everybody has to demand for their right to breathe and right to clean air and the governments and policy makers yeah. they are aware about it they are okay. facing it and they will okay. act okay so working in silos is not going to help air pollution the this latest report highlights that farmers are facing problems whether it's in terms of adopting new technologies uh, what is essentially needed is to an overhaul of uh, our agrarian system and that in turn will also help